Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the Artificial Horizon build series. Now in the last episode I showed you guys how you could add your speed, how you could add your altitude and you could also add your compass heading on the screen so as you move things go and change on your screen and just a little bit more information. So in this episode what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to add some trailing and forward looking numbers for your speed and also for your altitude. So for example, above this, we might see 20, 30, and below it, we might see zero and negative 10. Same thing on our speed, we might see uh, 10 knots, 20 knots, and then below it, minus 20, etc. Okay, now I've already gone and done it, so I can show you what it might look like. So if you are interested in looking and seeing how this works, uh, then I'm going to show you. I'm also going to show you how you can format these numbers so that you get them either to move left and right, or you get these zeros. To be written in front of them which is really cool so if you're interested definitely keep along with this video it's going to be a lot of fun so as always we're going to jump into the workbench now first things first as always this is not meant to be a full-on math tutorial or a full-on lua tutorial this is just me building how i would build and sharing my knowledge of the game and also how to do these things with you so let's get started so the first thing is we're going to jump straight back into our my controller editor we're going to click on confirm and we're going to go into our second Lua script where we have that speed and altitude and a few other things like that. So in here, you can remember from the last episode, we added in this, which was our speed. We had our alt in here and we added a compass here. Now to go and add forward looking numbers and previous numbers, it's actually relatively simple. All we need to do is we want to make sure that we have the same line here just five times. OK, so we're going to go and add this in and we'll make sure we have five of them. OK. So this one's going to be the top one, this one will be the one down, this one will be the actual one which has got our proper speed on it, and then we'll have another two. Now all we have to do is offset these numbers, okay, where it draws on the screen in theory. So we're going to come to the one just above our speed, and we're going to say, hey, I want you to draw at, let's say, negative 11 this time. Yeah, we're just taking into consideration about 8 pixels between the text. Once again, we're going to go to the next one, we're going to say, hey, I want you to draw at 17 pixels, okay? Going below it, we're going to say, hey, so where this is currently at the moment in the middle of our screen, I want you to add this time. I want you add on, let's say, five pixels. And the other one, hey, I want you add on about 11 pixels. OK, so that should now offset our text and we should have our speed written five times on our screen. So let's go and update that. Let's confirm it and let's spawn that in. So now you can see we've got our speed all the way along here okay so you can see whatever our speed was it would implicate it above and below okay cool but i want to offset those numbers so the one above directly above our speed i want to do at least 10 from what the speed we're doing now the same thing goes for above that i want to let's say another 10 above that so if it's zero i want 10 and 20 above and if it's zero i want minus 10 below and minus 20 below okay so we're going to do that so it's always showing us what the next two numbers are and what the previous two numbers were so back into our lewis script and now we're just going to offset our speed now you can see from the last video we added this math dot floor but we've got it repeated five times that's not really a clean way to do that so instead i'm going to take this math dot floor and i'm going to apply it to our speed up here instead of doing it five times so i'm going to come up to my speed i'm going to do math dot floor open and close so we are theoretically rounding that number or bringing it down to its closest whole digit over here instead of here. So now what we can do is we can actually get rid of the math floor floor. And yeah, just makes it a little bit more cleaner. Once again, you don't have to do this, okay? It will be important for later on when we add some more features on, okay? I'm just getting rid of these extra brackets. So now we have our speed. We got five speeds. So we're gonna say, hey, this is our main speed, which needs to be the current speed we're going at. But the one above it, I want you to add 10. And the one above that, I want you to add 20. And then underneath it, I want you to add minus 10. And the one underneath that, I want you to add minus 20. So now in theory, if we go and spawn that in and we go and check, we should have zero in the middle, add 10 for the one at the top, add another 10 for the one above that, and so on. And there you go. So you can now see whatever our speed is, it shows us the same speed above, but adds 10 and so on. Okay, so we can see forward looking and behind, okay, which is pretty cool. So far we have that. Now, I don't want these numbers to show if it's negative. Okay, so if we're going at zero knots, 
I don't want to see what the negative numbers are. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and add some if statements for that. So back into our controller, back into edit and into our second Lua script. Now, as I said, these are the two two things that we're drawing. Let me just get to them here. These are the two things that we're drawing that we don't want to see if our speed is either 10 or below or 20 or below. So as I said, we're going to use two if statements. So we're going to come at the top here and we're going to say, hey, if the speed is greater than, for example, 10, then you can draw the line directly below it. OK, and now it's drawing the line and it's ending that if statement. OK, so that's a little if statement we've got there. The next one, once again, if the speed is greater than 20, then I want you to draw the line underneath it and you can end that little if statement. OK, so there's little two little if statements right over there. So in theory, now, if we were to spawn this in, our speed is zero, which means it shouldn't show these two lines underneath here. If our speed was above 10, it would show the line just below it. And if our speed was above 20, it would show the second line underneath it. Check errors, click on done, update the script, confirm, spawn it in, and let's go check. And there we go. So we now have our speed above and it will only show us our speed above if, or the speed below, if we are going more than 10 or 20. Now we can check that of course, by just going and adding like a throttle lever, for example, and let's just, you know, because this is a test bench, we don't actually have any speed. We're not going at any speed. So we're just going to add that for testing purposes. I'm going to go here, override my speed, and let's go and get us electricity. And now let's test that in. Okay, so if we jumped in there, if we can increase that, we probably want to actually go to that and tell it to go a little bit more in numbers, a maximum value, let's say a thousand. And let's go and test that now. Once again, you don't have to do this. This is purely just for my testing right now to show you guys this will move. So if we go and increase our throttle, can you see how this is working? It's only showing us the bottom lines if we are above 10 and 20. If I go down to, let's say, 21, you can see it's got one there. Let's go try and get to like 15 if I can. OK, I can't really. It's too sensitive here. But you can see how that's working and it can go all the way up and it can go all the way up to 999. OK. And we might want to clamp that number so it doesn't go out like that. OK, but you get the idea so far on all this. So now what we want to do is we want to actually move these digits all the way to the right. Now, we could have used a text box where we could have done some alignment. But at the moment, we don't have any alignment on here. It's just a regular text box. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to use some formatting inside of Lua that's built into built into the script. OK, and we're going to add that in. So to do that, we can open up our confirm, open up our Lua script, and we're going to add some formatting. Now, what it's called this is actually called string dot format. OK, open brackets and make sure you close the brackets. And inside there, we're going to say, hey, that number, which is the speed plus 20, I want to format it. OK, so you need to open up your quotation marks just over here. So we're going to come in and we're going to say, hey, percentage first. OK, so percentage. Now we're going to tell the system what, how do we want to format it? Do we want to format that number with zeros before the digit? Or do we want to just format it with nothing in theory, which is a hashtag? OK, so if we were to use a hashtag like that, the number, if we were to give it five, it would come out as zero, zero, five. OK, so that's if you use the hashtag. Sorry, if that's if you use the zero. OK, so if you were to use the zero like that, OK, you will get 0 0.05. If you were to switch it to a hashtag, it's kind of like a placeholder and saying, well, you know what, system, that is three digits, but don't show anything and just show a five. But the thing is, when you use this and you say, hey, I have, for example, three of them. OK, it's a three digit number. It's going to shift that one, two across, thinking that's got a digit there and it's thinking it's got a digit there. Let's start with a zero and I'll show you guys what that does. OK, so there are three and press D. Three tells it how many deaths or how many digits it is. So we got three digits as we learned in the last video. We're only going to go up to a maximum of nine, nine, nine for our speed. However, you could put it as four digits. You could have sort of five digits. It's up to you. I'm going to sit with three. So now if we were to spawn this in, we should get zero, zero, zero if we were going at zero speed. So let's go and test it out. Confirm the errors. Click on done. Update it. Confirm it and spawn it in. Let's go and have a look. 
Ooh, look at that. So now it's always got a zero in front of its digit. And obviously if it was at zero, it would be zero, zero, zero. So let's go and do it for all of the other numbers. So we're gonna go back into our controller, back into confirm, back into the lower script. And we're going to add the same string format for all these other speeds. So we're just gonna copy the whole thing, okay? And we can stick with zeros for now. Come both, come front, there we go, there we go, there we go, okay? Add your comma. Okay, to tell it there's a value there, and we need to just close our brackets. Okay, for all of that. Close brackets again, and close brackets again. Okay, so we should have one, two, oh, I forgot to do one here. No, I did, oh, that's fine actually. And yeah, looks good. So once again, check for errors, and now we should have zeros in front of all of those numbers. Confirm it in, jump in here, and let's check. Boom, there we go. So now it says 000, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 and 0, 020, 0, okay? Which is pretty cool. Now we could get rid of those zeros, as I said already. So if we don't want to show those zeros, we could come in here, click into our controller, go over to that script or that formatting, and we say, hey, don't put a zero, put a hashtag instead. Remember, hashtag will tell the system there's a meant to be a value there, but don't show it unless it's actually got a one, two, three, four, or five. So hashtags, confirm it, done, update it, and spawn it in. Let's go and check, and there you go. You can see how now it's all in line, and it will stay all in line as we move forwards and backwards, which is really cool, okay? So now that we know how to do the left-hand part, which was our speed, we also want to do the altitude, okay? So we also want to do the altitude. We want to do trailing, uh, trailing. maybe we want to show every hundreds or every thousands, it's up to you on how you want to do it. We're going to do the, exactly the same format. However, we're going to do one thing different. So let's just go through and let's go and start building that exactly the same way as before. I'm gonna go into my Lua script and I'm going to make sure that I've got my altitude five times. Okay, so now that I got my altitude five times, I'm also gonna offset it exactly the same how I offsetted my speed earlier. Now that we've offset that, that should be drawing our altitude in five times along the line. What we can also do now is we can go and add our string formatting on. But before we do that, we need to move our math floor up to the top here, just like we did for our speed. Now that we've done that, we can remove our math speed and instead we can go and add our string format on. Now for the altitude, I'm not going with three digits, I'm going with four digits. So I'm gonna do the same string dot format. However, instead of a three, I'm gonna be putting a four instead. So now that we have that in, we can now go and tell the system what we want to increase the altitude to, above it and below it. Do we want to increase it by 100 each time? Do we want to increase it by 1000 each time? Do we want to subtract it by 100? Or do we want to subtract it by 1000? It's up to you on how you want to do this. I'm doing it per the 100, okay? So I'm doing it per the 100 here. Okay, now we can go and spawn that in and see if it's actually going to work. So let's click on update, confirm that in, and spawn in. Let's go and have a look. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Okay, so we've got our 10, 110, 210, minus 1900, minus 190. Okay, so we want to get rid of the negatives. Now we do it exactly the same way as we did before. We come into the controller, we go into our Lua script and we're going to add some if statements. Okay, so we're gonna come here and we're gonna say, if the alt is greater than, because we're doing it in de uh, of hundreds, so if it's greater than 100, then draw this line, end. And once again, if the alt is greater than 200, then draw this line, end. Okay, so you can see how we're using if statements again, say if it is above this amount, then you can draw the line underneath it, okay? Which means that's gonna disappear. And we can once again check the errors, check on done, update it, confirm it, spawn it in, and now we shouldn't see the negatives. Okay, negatives are gone. Perfect. But there's a problem. These numbers are updating as where our altitude is changing. You can see it's changing from nine to 109 to 209, 110, 210. 
211, etc. Now, I want these numbers to be static. When I mean static, I want them to always say 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, etc. I don't want it to be affected by our actual altitude. This is the only one that I want to give us our real alt. So, how do we do that? Well, we can use something called a round feature. Okay, we're going to actually define a whole new function in our Lewis script. Okay, so what that's going to do, and by the way, guys, if you want to literally, if you go and search on Google, um, your how to round a number um, to the nearest tens or hundreds and etc., you can go and do it um, by just going looking on, on Google and searching for it in Lua. It's very, very commonly known uh, if you go and Google it. So just use that very simple. Exactly what I did. I went on Google, said, hey, how do I round a number? And that's what it gave me. Okay. I know more or less what some of these things are doing, but the rest of it, as it, I learn as I go. Okay, so we've got that in now. So now in theory, that round feature there or function, if we give it a number, it will round it. So what we can do now is we can say, hey, I'm going to define a new value. Okay, I'm going to call it rlt, which means rounded alt. And I'm going to say a rounded alt is equal to round, okay, open brackets. And inside there, I'm going to throw my alt, which I've got coming in from here, okay. And I'm actually going to say, hey, I want you to go negative two decimals on it, okay? So negative two decimals. Usually what you could do is actually say two. That way, if you gave it, let's say, an altitude of 98, it would do 98.00 um, because it has two decimals. But we're going to say negative two decimals. So the, let's say 100 is actually now one in theory, okay? That's pretty cool. So we've got that, and we're now all we're going to do is going to add R into in front of our top two and our bottom two. Okay, so it should round those to the nearest tens or to the nearest hundreds. Okay, at the moment it's rounding to the nearest tens. Okay, if we wanted to round it to the nearest hundreds, we can go back into our Lewis script, come up to the top here, and you can see where it's got 10. We're going to say, hey, round to the nearest hundred. Okay, instead, I'm going to round it to the hundred, update it in, confirm it and spawn that in and there we go let's go and move it down and you can see this changes but the number above it doesn't change it's always a static 100 200 300 400 etc etc okay so guys that's as far as i'm going to be going in this video today i think we've done quite a lot we've got all these numbers along the left and right hand side being quite a lot of code um and it's been a lot of fun. It's really cool to learn how to format things and how to configure them. As I said, if we want to let we, we wanted to add zeros, let's add zeros in front of the altitude. We can do that, go back into the Lewis script, go down, and instead of using hashtags again, just use zeros. Okay, let's just change that to zeros. And now it's going to go and show us the zeros in front of the altitude, which should be really cool. And let's go and spawn that. Cool. Okay, so now we've got our zeros there. That's it. You don't have to do that. You can change this completely as much as you want to completely up to. Now, in the next episode, I'm going to show you guys how you can add a bank indicator on your screen. Okay, I'm going to show you how you can add a bank indicator on your screen. Now, I've actually already got one that I started working on. I'm going to show you guys what it is. So if you want to learn how to do this, keep an eye out for the next episode. And you can see here at the bottom, as I bank, it moves my cursor left and right. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that, which is going to be a lot of fun. And that way you can see, oh, well, I'm banking at, let's say, 90 degrees, or I'm banking at 180 degrees, or I'm banking at, let's say, 15 degrees. Okay, and you can easily see how much you're banking by adding this little arrow here at the bottom. We'll add some more lines and stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode. So guys, that's where we're going to be ending off for today. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. It does take quite a lot, obviously, to make these videos. Uh, it's very technical in terms of coding. And I'm learning as I go, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it, doing something different and something new here for myself and learning something new. So guys, if you have enjoyed it, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss any of my future content, hit that bell icon. And until the next one, we will see you then.